We just finished discussing the processor's speed techniques in which various technologies has been used to enhance the CPU performance. Now we are going to the fifth items about the performance balance. To explain about the performance balance, let's take a look at these pictures. As mentioned in the last chapters, CPU is not the single component in the computers. It works together with the memories, work together with the memories, the I.O. as well. And the problem here is how to make the whole system fast, not just only the CPU. Why processor power has raised ahead a breakneck speed? Other critical components of the computers have not kept up. The result is a need to look for performance balance and adjusting of the organizations and architectures to compensate for the mismatch amongst the capabilities of various components. Here is the CPU, the memories, and the IOs. Nowhere is the problem created by such mismatch more critical than in the interface between the processors and the main memories. Why processor speed has grown rapidly the speed with which data can be transferred between the main memories and the processor has lagged badly. The interface between the processor and the main memory is the most crucial part way in the entire computer because it is responsible for carrying a constant flow of programs, instructions, and data between the memory chips and the processor. The following measures are applied for the processor memory interface. The first measure is to increase the numbers of bits, that means the numbers of other lines between the CPU and the memories. That means we use a wider data bus. That means we increase the numbers of lines here. Instead of one, we use multiple lines. For a 16-bit system, we use 16 lines. For a 32-bit system, we use 32 lines. And for a 64-bit system, we use 64 lines. So this will make a wider data bus. The second measure is to reduce the frequencies of memory access by incorporating increasing complex and efficient cache structures between the processor and the memories. The cache memory is a special memory area that sits near the CPU part between the CPU and the external memories. This is a very efficient measure because you know the CPU is super fast while the memory is not so fast, moderately fast. This means when the CPU issues an instructions to fetch one byte from the memory, for example. The CPU need to wait for some system blocks before it can read the bytes from the external memory because the speed between the two models is not equal. We will talk about this in more details in, in the next chapters. The third measure is to increase inter interconnect bandwidth between the processors and memory by using higher speed bus between the CPU and the memory. Okay, those are related to the interconnections between the CPU and the memory. Now we come to the IOs. Another area of design focus is the handling of IO device. As computers become faster and more capable, more sophisticated applications are developed that support the use of peripherals with intensive I.O. demands. Strategies here include caching and buffering scheme, plus the use of higher speed interconnection bus and more elaborate structures of bus. In addition, the use of multiple processor configurations can add in satisfying I.O. demands. The key in all this is balance. Design constantly strive to balance the throughput and processing demands of the CPU components, main memories, I.O. device, 
and the interconnection structures. This design must constantly be rethought to cope with the two constant evolving factors. First, the rate at which performance is changing in various technology areas like the processors, the bus, the memory peripherals. These differ greatly from one type of elements to others to another. Like you have seen, the difference between the processing speed of the CPU and the memories. So new applications and new peripherals device constantly change the nature of the demands on the system in terms of typical instructions profile and the data access patterns. And the last major, besides the improvements, data transmissions between the CPU and the memories, the data transmission between the CPU and the I.O. is the improvement in the chips organizations and architectures. Okay, let's take a note here. We have two improvements. One is the improvement here. Another is improvement here the communications between the CPU and the I.O. system. And the third measure, this is one. This is two. And the third measure is the improvement in the chips, organizations, and architectures. For example, the engineers may increase the hardware speed of the processor. You know, the processors work with the, the clocks, but if CPU does not support the high clock speed that will make the CPU very hot and it will hang the computers when the highest clock speed supply to the CPU and as you have seen the videos about fabrications of chips you can see that shrinking the size of the logic gates on the processor chips the propagation time for signal is significantly reduced and hence will speeding up the processor. Besides the increments of the speed of this processor, the engineers can increase the clock rate. When you increase the clock speed, the individual operations inside the CPU will execute more rapidly. Another measure is to use multi-core processor. Because when you use multi-core processors combining with parallelly execute programs the computing powers of the computers will be drastically enhanced okay now we conclude this part with this diagrams this chart this is a chart about processor trends and i want to show you the importance of multi-core in computers on this chart there are four items that we want to observe. First is the number of transistors on the chips. Second is the frequency, the operating work frequency of the CPU. Third is the power consumption of the CPU. And the last attribute is the numbers of core of a CPU. Now first, let's take a look at the the number of cores. The number of cores of the CPU is a straight line here from 1970 until 2003. Right? So during that time, the CPUs are produced in single core. And at that time, people just think that if they want to make the CPU faster, they need to, to supply the CPU with the higher frequency. The higher the frequency, the higher the frequency, the CPU will run faster. But the downside is that if you push the speed of the CPU by increasing the frequency, the power consumptions or the heat dissipations on the CPU chip will also be 
higher. So you can, this is the power dissipations on the CPU chips, right, will be higher. And if you want to want to use, if you continue to use mono core, and you want the CPU to work faster, you need to push the frequency higher. And this will make the, CP, the CPU even hotter and hotter. After 2003, the engineer just figure out that they can attain the same performance without needing to push the frequency higher and then will not make the CPU too hot by using multi core CPU. Take a look here from 1900. 2004-2005 then we have two core or three core here and with the two core or three core they don't need to push the frequency high and because the frequency is not high so the power consumptions on the CPU will be controlled Right, will control, and the lines will will not increase anymore. So the art here is to make the CPU faster. We don't need the higher. We don't need the high speed block. We just need to increase the numbers of core of the CPU. This also this also help to reduce the heat dissipations on the CPU chips. And nowadays, besides the increments of the number of scores, the engineers also increase the numbers of cores of the GPU chips. That means the graphics processing unit. And you know that recently, they use their many algorithms that they want to to, to mine the bitcoins and because the processing power of the GPU is very great so they use a lot of high power GPU to mine the bitcoins that you have heard recently they finish the performance balance sub items